much for joining us mm -hmm. and the yeah, exploring the political science track that yeah. UCR has to offer. To start it off, can you tell me a little bit about the kinds of courses that students might encounter in the political science track? Yeah, I think it's uh, important to see that the political science track consists of what we call political science and also of international relations. Yes. So students can uh, explore both directions, so to say. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, essentially, the, 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 the track starts with uh, an introduction course in political philosophy, mm -hmm. where students learn about the, the great philosophers, in particular in relation to, to politics. Yeah, so, so, so Plato and Aristotle and, uh, and, and, and more recent philosophers like uh, John Locke and John Stuart Mill, etc. Um, so these are. This is a course that's actually also interest, uh, interesting for students who, who later on would not pursue political science. And then basically there are two branches you could say. You could you could go in the direction of international relations, mm -hmm. and in that case you will take an introduction into international relations. And there is a a third year course called uh, Security in the Post Cold War Era, which is more really about security matters, so mm -hmm. to say. So that's international relations. And then there is political science uh, properly, you could say, <laughs> which is very much tries to cover the main courses in political science. And that, that is uh, principally it's the comparative politics course where you learn about the actual operation of political systems. You learn how to measure democracy. You learn about transitions. You, you learn about authoritarian regimes, about populism, etc. And uh, then there are two 300 level courses. One is about the European Union. It's called European Union Politics because the European Union is, of course, a very important body, uh, political system. And the other is called public policy. It's about public policy and it's about making decisions, how are policies made, etc. Then finally, every other uh, two years, so every fall when there is an election in the, in the United States, we offer the U.S. government and politics course, and that, that comes then in lieu of the comparative politics course. And it's very nice to teach that course, to take that course in an election year, be it a presidential election or a midterm election. So that's the overall picture of the political science track. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, so there, the students have quite a lot of different opportunities yeah. within the track. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, if you were to zoom in on some of the courses, what can yeah. students expect in terms of coursework, in terms of projects, yeah. in terms of maybe research they can get engaged in? Yeah, yeah. So I think that uh, a common, I think a, a common element in, in in all these courses is that, of course, as, as with many courses at UCR, we see a mix of of activities. Um, exams are certainly one part of it, but I don't think they're 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 the most important. There is a lot of paper writing. Uh, often in, in the courses, you will start out with some briefer papers or assignments, and that allows you to de develop your writing skills. You get some feedback from your instructor. And then there's a final paper or a research paper, which is also good because that, again, then prepares you for the senior project. So, so the, 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 the writing also, I think, is geared towards giving you the, the writing skills and the research skills that in the end also helps you write a very good senior project um, work. So that's writing. Then I think basically in every course we have presentations. Um, they may of course differ in, in, in terms of the length and the, and the scope, but there is some type of presentation. And then I think that there are also a couple of more yeah, innovative uh, teaching uh, and, and learning uh, methods one is uh, problem-based learning, where students sit together and get an, an unstructured problem uh, and then learn something like, for example, in the public policy course, we organize that around the problem of sugar and, and students are then presented with the case, for example, the case of, uh, um, uh, the, the case of fair, fair labor issues uh, in, in sugar production. Uh, and then they, they explore that case and, and, and learn in that way. In the international relations uh, courses, there is also simulations. So there is the, the my colleague uh, David Kriegemans works with the United Nations simulations, mm -hmm. and he has a lot of experience in doing that. Um, for example, a simulation around the South China Sea, where students have to 
impersonate uh, the different countries that are involved in that. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's kind of the, the type of activity that you see in the course, yeah. Right, so lots of practical skills that mm -hmm. students will be using later yeah. on, of course. Yeah. Now, of course, we're not that far away from some key areas for European Union politics yeah. or for international relations. So yeah. do students have, in normal times, of mm -hmm. course, have the opportunity to maybe go on a field trip to some of these yeah. institutions, or how does that work? Yeah, so what, indeed, pre-COVID, <laughs> <laughs> what used to be the, the, the practice is that uh, for the intro politics, political philosophy course, there would be an excursion to The Hague, to the capital, uh, visiting a member of parliament. Um, so we, of course, plan to uh, to do that again. Uh, we also benefit here from the fact that actually the the, the professor who teaches that course uh, he sat in the Dutch Parliament for a couple of years. So it's of course fantastic to actually have uh, an instructor, uh, a professor who has first-hand experience in the world of politics, mm -hmm. and can can reflect on that through that. Um, and indeed, uh, also in other courses, we try to organize excursions. So in the, in the EU politics course, we usually would have an excursion to the EU institutions. Um, that being said, I think also, thanks to COVID, uh, we've discovered that actually it's much easier to arrange guest lectures. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so, so I think that we will see an increase in, in guest lectures. Uh, and that that's really interesting because sometimes you know for the EU it can be very difficult to actually organize an excursion and meet all the people you want to meet. And it's much easier to ask people, you know, can you spare an hour to join our class through Zoom? Uh, so we've had some very nice experiences with that. Uh, I in, in 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 both of my courses, for example, I invited the author of the book that the students read. For the course uh, for a meet the author at the end of the course and that was very nice also the the author liked it a lot um, so that these are also ways to make the course more um, yeah interesting and diverse in terms of the teaching experience mm -hmm. yeah yeah so some great positive outcomes of mm -hmm. the whole pandemic there yes yeah. now of course politics and international relations doesn't live in isolation it's yeah. just a liberal arts and science program of course yeah. so yeah. what are some combinations that you've seen students make yeah, uh, I think we see, of course, we see many students that are in the social science track, so to say, and they may combine these courses with uh, economics mm -hmm. uh, and also with law. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a very logical connection, for example, between European Union politics and European law. And then if you also do an IR course, I think then you, you, you have a nice spectrum here of, of politics and law. Uh, philosophy is also uh, a useful link. Of course, we we do you, you can actually build a kind of you know philosophy, politics, economics kind of mm -hmm. configuration of courses, which is offered in, at, at many places. Um, I think those are those are a couple of the more uh, common choices, so to say. If people, let's say, if people like the world of institutions and policy making, mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's one direction. Um, Another direction I think would take you more in the direction of, of, of really social science and then you can think about links with anthropology. Uh, there's for example a course on anthropology in the state. Um, th those are more critical approaches basically to, to the state and to politics and also psychology uh, where um, it's more also about understanding the behavior of people and also understanding the behavior of people when they are in a specific role so to mm -hmm. say. So that's also a combination that you that you that you can see, yeah. Right. So quite a lot of different opportunities yeah. to find yeah. in different social sciences. Yeah. And, yes. Um, yeah. So what do you see students who've completed yeah. the politics and international relations track one way or the other? Yeah. What are some of the careers or master programs even yeah. that they end up going yeah. into? Yeah, I think there is a, a definite. Uh, set of students uh, who, ch who who go for the classic international relation uh, relations program, so they pursue a master in international relations um, or uh, international security, and those you, you, there, there there are all kinds of modifications nowadays that are more focused. That's definitely a set we see, mm -hmm. um, and then we have 
quite a few also who go more into what's called public administration. In Dutch we call it uh, bestuurskunde, mm -hmm. which is a bit more practical, um, which is more hands-on about, you know, about how, how to organize public decision making. So it's not only about governments, but it's also about non-profit organizations and about, um, you know, performing public tasks, so to say. So the, they, 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 for example, quite a few who, who do the program on European governance at Utrecht University, at the Utrecht uh, School of Governance. Um, and then thirdly, I think you see uh, some students taking a really a master in political science. And that's that, that's that more really an academic uh, approach, uh, including a research master. Uh, research two-year research master in political science, for example, in Leiden um, or in Amsterdam, where there is more an emphasis on really doing social science research, um, and even you know you may you may um, then go on to do a PhD. Mm -hmm. um, but I think those those are the three things within the domain of politics IR. And then, of course, I mean, they fly out to other directions like economics, etc. But I don't have a, I don't have a good look about that because those students usually tell only their economics professors right. where they where they went. <laughs> right. Yeah. But I think from from what you're telling us, it's a, yeah, the the politics and international relations track it can lead to a very academic career, yes. doing comparative politics, yes. political philosophy. Yeah. But also keeps the option open for students who want to be you know practitioners in, in European Union yeah. politics yeah. or NGO work yeah. or yeah. absolutely diplomats yeah um, yeah so we see that and I think also that that's important to realize I think um, in the old days uh, yeah you had the world of diplomacy and uh, <laughs> you know but the, the the modern world is much more diverse so 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 I, I, we don't have that many old-fashioned diplomats anymore that work for embassies you know we have much more people that work as uh, policy advisors right. and uh, I also very often tell the students don't you know fixate on diplomacy because uh, many of course want to work in the international wor world but you you almost always automatically arrive in international context yeah, I mean if you work for the Ministry of Agriculture or for the Ministry of Environment, uh, you will regularly meet with your colleagues in Brussels uh, to talk about EU environmental policies. Mm -hmm. um, so there is an international dimension in, in, in many of these uh, jobs, so to say, and that also makes it very, yeah, very interesting, I think, uh, and it, 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 it gives you a, a much wider range of options than in the old days where basically the only choice was becoming a you know, working for an embassy, so mm -hmm. to say. Right. So a lot of soul searching available for students who have a, yeah. an interest in working in the international world. Yeah, yeah, and then also you see students working for for provinces, yeah, regional mm -hmm. uh, regional level of government, um, also for I think uh, think tanks mm -hmm. or research institutes. Um, if you do a research master. You can you, you qualify very well to work for like the social cultural planning office or or other advisory councils or think tanks. Um, so we've also seen quite a few students going in that direction or NGOs, for example, that 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 work, for example, um, for for improving sustainability. Um, I know that one of our alumni went on to the so-called uh, the rainforest. Uh, alliance, I think, uh, the certification organization for, uh, for, uh, for, for, for food products. So, so that's also, I think, uh, a very interesting area. Right. Well, I think you've given us a great mm -hmm. insight into the yeah. political science and international relations track and the options that students have afterwards. So thank yeah. you so much for okay. joining us. You're in welcome. The introduction. Yeah. Thank yeah. you.